Hello, and welcome to my show. My name is Madison Star Moon. Welcome back to the show is what I should say, because I've been off the air for a long time now. I've just taken a little break. I'm basically spending my time doing a lot of Facebook Live videos. Um, I also do post a lot on YouTube. YouTube did just recently shut down my account that I had for six years. It was extremely disappointing, but, you know, I did open up another one, and now I've got a little over 100 videos on that one. Of course, it's nothing compared to the 800 videos I had on my other channel. But, you know, what are you going to do? We are all being censored and shut down one at a time, and then they do it again. And so I have a, a large list of people that I would like to speak today on the show. I'm really glad that people decided to call in. Uh, tonight we have John Graff, Risha Leone, Doug Seitz, Lynn Fawns, Richard Dwayron, and Andriana Rossi. We also have Matthew Meese and Ruth Blackburn that are going to be calling in. Um, as people speak, they're going to be dropping off the line. They'll leave the lines open if anybody else would like to join. Like I said, I really appreciate everyone's time. And on that note, we'll get, get it started with my brother, uh, my brother from another mother, Doug Seitz. How are you doing tonight, Doug? Uh, same old, same old. Wondering what next thing is going to happen to distract us away from everything that's going on. You know, nowadays, the censoring, I mean, they're... They're coming out now. They want to uh, artificial intelligence is purging the net. Um, we're just being censored. We're being, you know, Trump's out there trying. I really do think Trump is is doing what he says he's doing. It's just the fact that the other side is opposing his opinions. They they just cannot stand the fact that they're not in control anymore and. <laughs> you know, I, I think yeah, once I know Trump takes, well, I think once Trump takes the money, it, it all comes down to one thing: follow the money. Where does the money go? Once you stop the money, you stop the the whole operation. You, you stop the chemtrails flying in the air and spraying us, and you know, just the nonstop crap that they're doing, the false flags, right. the everything i mean i i don't know it's just it's like we were talking about that hillary clinton snuff film it supposedly dropped yesterday i haven't seen it i i, I don't know if i want to see it but it's been around for a while ever since they've gotten uh anthony weiner's laptop and i mean it made grown men cry and they're completely they don't know what to do after watching it. I mean, I, I just, that's why I say I couldn't imagine watching something that horrific if it's true. But, I mean... If it's this true is, is it. the key point. If it's true, right, go ahead. If it, but if it's true, I mean, how are the people going to react to this? Do you not think that half the nation would break down if they saw something like that and said, oh, no, no, that's not true? You know, I mean... Or just the fact that if Hillary and Obama got put in prison for what they've been doing. I mean, it's just been a slow coup of the United States to bring us to a third world country. I mean, everybody's got to realize it. Where are we buying all our products from? China. We don't produce anything anymore. We're a nation of people working in a restaurant job, getting by 30 hours a day, you know, thirty hours a week. Thirty hours know, a day. Woo! Get, that's a good money well, no, right there. Yeah, well, could, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but that's what I'm saying. It's just it's this whole thing with Obama and Hillary was to bring the United States down to a third world country, and thank God Trump. Trump did not want to do this. He was asked to do this, in my opinion, and that's what I've I've heard. Now, whether it's true or not, okay. I don't know. But from what I've seen, it really looks like he does care about the United States and he wants to get rid of the Federal Reserve and the, the yeah. bullshit okay. they put in. You yeah. know? Well, I know what your beliefs are. I know what your beliefs are, but I don't trust any puppet. I especially don't trust anybody that's leading this country. I mean, to get to that point, you have yeah. to be pretty damn corrupt in the first place. But it's okay for you to have your opinion and support Trump. I have lots of friends that support Trump. I don't fall for the left-right paradigm. I hate both parties equally, and that's just the way it is. But, okay, so we're down to, we've only got 23 minutes left, Doug, and 
Did you want to say anything else? Because I have to like I have to let some other people on the line. Did you? What about okay. the chemtrails well, in Arizona? You said they're not spraying in Arizona right now, right? Well, they weren't, and then again today they just covered us over. I mean, it's it's like one day it's here, and then the next day it's not, and you know, it's yeah. but that's just it. Come on, people, look up. Look, I mean, do those look like real clouds? No. Yeah, <laughs> they're spraying You're shit right. on us. I know. Yeah, it's terrible, Doug. Well, I appreciate you coming on. You're my bestie and my family, and I love you, and I really appreciate you. We're going to do – Doug has been the one that's been pressuring me to, you know, get back on the radio. He's like, when are we going to do a blog talk? When are, we, when are you going to get back on and stuff? So I'm really glad that you were able to join us for this show, and you have volunteered to sacrifice yourself so the next person can come in. I appreciate that, Doug. All right, we'll go on to Risha. Let me find you, 615. Yep, you're there. All right, Risha. So I am. Recently, you posted – Yes, you posted some amazing uh, photographs from inside the plane. Why don't you tell us about that? Uh, yeah, well, I go back and forth to Philadelphia from Nashville a lot because I have a um, a mom there who's getting up there and uh, just to handle a lot of stuff for her. So I always try to photograph from the plane. It's sort of figure it's a unique opportunity to, you know, just kind of see what's going on. And I, I'm always struck by a few things. One... I am struck by the fact that usually when we take off from Nashville, we have to go through a layer of pretty low chemtrail haze, and Nashville is heavily chemtrailed most of the time. I mean, it's rare we don't get, maybe we get a couple of days here and there. You know, usually it's like we might get the morning. I've noticed in the morning we're we're kind of okay most mornings, but uh, so takeoff is always like the, it's like 10 minutes going through this white haze where you can't see anything. And then, you know, going above the clouds, I like to look and see the patterns and just see what's going on with all the pulsing. And, you know, I see chemtrails over clouds. I see, like, uh, one of my photos I have, like, there's, like, a layer of clouds. It's just massive. It just goes on and on as far as the eye can see. And then there's, like, blank sky above it. And then above that, there's yet another layer. So um, that struck me. And I was thinking, you know, because... If you're up there in a plane, you know, and I know that there are UFOs out there because I had a sighting uh, a few months ago where I saw like seven or eight bright orbs dancing across the sky and went the whole trajectory of the sky. So I know stuff's up there and so I'm always, I'm I'm kind of, when I look out the window, I'm looking for that too. (laughs) Looking for anything that's just like weird. But then I was thinking, well, if there's two layers, then maybe those guys are like, you know, above the other layer i don't know but that's that's still kind of a mystery to me trying to piece together you know what i mean like uh one time i was just sitting at a traffic light i looked up and there was a black triangle above me and then and then i blinked and it was gone it was like it instantly left you know it was just like it literally just vaporized in a split second so i'm seeing ufos you know from the ground so now i'm looking for them from the plane but yeah i take pictures of the sky i mean I'm, i'm just transfixed by how bizarre it is and, it's, and it seems like the activity is ramping up for sure, at least in Nashville and Philadelphia. It is totally ramping up, so I can't speak for right. other parts. Yeah, I have a comment that. on that. Uh, John Graff is with us, and he recently filmed a uh, UFO as well, and he goes to all the UFO um, gatherings that they have where they film the UFOs in California. John, are you with him? Yeah. Okay, yeah, why don't you tell yeah. us about that, uh, that object that you filmed? What was it, yesterday? It was last night, but I didn't film it. I saw it, and I okay. went to film it, and it vanished out. It? But it, was a, it looked like a black ship. It wasn't an orb, but it was a black object, and it was parked in the sky. It was just parked there. And two people were there, and I pointed it out, and they saw it. And I whipped the camera around to shoot it, and the thing just faded out. So I usually can catch these things, but that one didn't let me do it. But it was really mm. weird because we yeah. had an orange sky, and then this this black thing sitting right in the middle, not moving. It was very eerie. So Your phone is exactly making all kinds of weird, funky sounds, John. What's up with that? Is it, are you using I don't a, know. I'm, I'm, no. I, have, I don't know what it's doing. I'm closed <laughs> in a, I'm in a closed room. You're making me sound like a total douche head. <laughs> yeah, on. no, you're good. Okay, I'm not, I know I'm good, you've I'm been good. under, yeah, I know you've been under the weather right now. Do you have the chemtrail flu or what's going on? I think I do. I think a lot of people have it out here. I'm, I see people coming out of stores, scratching their lottery tickets, and coughing up jellyfish. It's like the sickest thing. 
You know, they're coughing up this stuff, mm-hmm. and the same here. We all have it. And what I notice is that when they do spray the sky, there's a certain point in the evening that they whip the wind up. The wind just comes around and stirs everything up, and everybody feels horrible. It's like a totally intentional, like a witch's brew being stirred up to mix it with everybody, you know? And, and I notice this. It's really fake. It's artificial, like it comes out of nowhere. Uh, um, so, yeah, there, no. I just recently read an yeah, article where um, particulates in in the sky, and this is a scientific article, um, actually create some kind of uh, wind effect. It's like the very fact that they're there, and there are a lot of them, and they're dense, makes the weather more volatile. So they may these particulates may just be on their own. You know, it's just like an expected side effect whipping up the wind. Yeah, I was going to ask Risha and John. Anything. Do you guys think these could be drones? Because, Risha, you were up there. I mean, do you believe the, the planes that you were witnessing that were leaving the trails or, or whatever that you saw, do you think they could be drones? Um, I know not all of these trails are coming from planes. There's just no way. Right. I know that from just observing from the ground. I mean, I see things going yep. straight up in the air, and then just stopping, you know, like it just stops, you know. And I mean, I've seen both, but I've seen, I, I've seen more and more lately activity that are either rockets, Drones, I don't know what, you know, but you it's, it's definitely not all, all planes. Uh, one, one day I was just driving down the street, and I saw this vertical chemtrail come up. It wasn't from the horizon line. It was like it just started, you know, above the horizon line, and then it stopped. Like it was a long dash, and then I saw an orb literally cascade down from the top of this vertical chemtrail down to the bottom of it and faded as it came cascading down. I have no idea what that was, but that was not a plane. So, no. you know. Something else is going on. You know, you know what's messed up is think, that my friends are trying to call in. I'm sorry, and Doug, it already bumped off, and they said that it still says that it's full. So it doesn't yeah. matter if people bump off or not. Yeah, it's it's un, it's not allowing anyone else. So I guess once the original cast calls in or whatever, then they just don't allow anybody else to call in. That's lame because I kind of remember before, it's been a while, that I was allowed to add new people. Well, anywho, okay, mm. so I mean, hopefully, like I just told her just to try again. Um, so she, yeah, she just said she's going to try again because I'm trying to get Ruth in here. All right, so, and there's the blog talk. Okay, I'm, I heard Lynn or Andriana, one of y'all had commented on what they were saying. Oh, um, I'm sorry. I, um, first the C-130 flew over really low with its landing lights on, and then um, we just heard the military jets go over, and that's what I was yeah. commenting on to the to the kids. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh huh. Boy, if there's one thing I know, it's the sound of a military jet living here next to the base. <laughs> I mean, I'm literally on the side of the thing is, is there, there's no base here for miles. And they're landing, mm-hmm. they're coming down and landing here at night. It's a little strange. Yeah, they could be refueling. Uh huh. Yeah, uh, who knows what I don't doing. know where they would refuel at because there's no base around here. Yeah, yeah Amanda, when it comes to the military, I mean, we don't know what they're doing. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to ask you, um, so you, I mean, I, I can't help but notice how incredibly hammered you get in Virginia Beach, way more than, I mean, Nashville's bad enough, and it's bad, but it's, like, worse where you are, and I know there's military activity, of course, but I kind of wonder if also the fact that the Edgar Case Center is there, if that factors oh, in yeah, at all. yeah, uh-huh. Sure. I just thought, you know, this is where my mind goes. My mind just kind of wanders off. I'm like, oh, yeah, the Edgar Cage Center's there. What the heck? Yeah, I used to like going there. It was fun. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. We're kind of known for that. Yeah, who knows, you know. But anyway, so does it make sense for me to get off at this point if you think other people can get off? No, no, you're fine. You're fine. There's no point. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's what they're doing. You know, like I said, let's talk a little bit about censorship. Now, we also have Lynn and Richard on here. I want to give everybody a chance to talk. Um, do any of you guys want to discuss about the censorship that you're personally going through on social media? Well, um, it's Lynn. I mean, I don't, it, it, everybody knows what's going on. Posts disappear. Your YouTube channel set, shut down, you know, things like that. I mean, it, it is. It is. It has a lot to do with everything. They don't want the truth getting out. They don't want anything. I mean, we have that project Mockingbird, and it's working very, very well. I mean, I can't even watch the news anymore. Well, not the news. I can't watch TV anymore. It, it, it's frustrating. <laughs> it's mind-boggling, you know. Oh, yeah. 
Uh huh. Once you become awake, everything disgusts you on TV. You're like, you liar! I see you. And you can like, yeah, all her dreaming at coming the TV. Out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it makes me so mad. Yeah, and then when you watch these commercials about the the medications that they're trying to pawn off to be like side effects or yeah. death and like you know all this stuff, and you're <laughs> like, whoa, the side effects are way worse than whatever that person was trying to combat. You know. <laughs> well, you know, I just learned that the all, hard uh, way. The, the um the whole thing most of these new illnesses they they got the meds for are vaccine induced autoimmune conditions so that's in play as well so it yeah. is yeah I just had major thing. dental surgery done and, and I uh I went through like a month of freaking hell from the antibiotics that they gave me and the antibiotics yeah. uh allowed you know killed the good bacteria in my body and like allowed me to you know get the it was basically like thrush like strep throat. And it was horrible. And yeah. I mean, that thing, it was, that was brutal. And they're like, you know, they, and then they had to give me medication to combat that and all this. And I'm just like, this is, I see what's going on here. You know, I mean, one thing leads to another. But I don't want to get off on a big pharma kick. But yeah, it's pretty creepy. Yeah. Just saying, well, no drugs, I, you know, I, I just like they taught us in school. I, I, I was just saying, they taught us, they put us all through the D.A.R.E. program in school. But what they failed to teach us was that, you know, the real drug dealers are the doctors and the pharmaceutical companies. Yeah. It, it's just, you know, they Very make well. you think that, you know, you got big drug pushers on every corner, you know, just say no to drugs. You just say no to drugs to your doctor. I haven't seen a doctor in 15 years. Last time I seen a doctor was after I had my third child and had my tubes tied. I have not gone to a doctor since. I, you know, I just, I don't fall Ooh. into the medicine line. I mean, anything yeah. that I need. Now, if I broke my arm or had to have surgery, yes. But the medication yeah. afterwards, I would completely, you know, tell them no, you know. I mean, yeah, I'd be in a lot of I pain. I needed my pain medication, pain though. Tolerable. Yeah, that was the one thing. True yeah, that. I was like, oh, thank Dude, God for the pain I've, medication. I've had teeth problems, too, and I've also had three children, and I'm telling you, nothing hurts worse than, you know, your your teeth or anything dental. So. Yeah, because it has all those um, all those uh, nerves right there. You know, when I had my mm-hmm. wisdom teeth removed, it just left nerves exposed in my mouth. And then having the uh, the other dental surgery that I had, I mean, my whole roof of my mouth was, it was just crazy. I was just like, ah, but, you know, it's all worth it in the end. In the end, you forget about the pain once everything's all said and done. But still. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the only thing I was, I was happy for was the pain medication that they gave me. Because without that, I would have straight up dropped dead. I mean, I was just like, wow, that's a new level <laughs> of pain I'm not used to. Okay, we do have, like, a semi-celebrity on here, Richard Drayron, and uh, I've been a a big fan of his post and of him for years now. Uh, How are you doing, Richard, calling from Canada? Well, I'm not doing too bad, and uh, it's really good to hear your voice at last, uh, Amanda, and and John Graps as well. Thank you. Um, Yeah, John, nice, nice to hear you. Uh, John is talking about UFOs, and I've, I've talked to John about this before. I, I've had close encounters, I mean, as close as 100 feet, and uh, been followed, you know, for miles and stuff in, in good company, and by UFOs going back over 40 years, <clears throat> those things were not drones, they weren't uh, planes, they, they were not anything conventional, uh, watching their movements yeah. going, you know, um, uh, level with my car, following me, and then all of a sudden shooting straight up at 1,000 miles an hour or whatever it was. <clears throat> incredible to see and to experience that. And then if you experience that one time, you're never the same again. But if you experience it a dozen times or more, then, you, you know, you're, there's no way you can go back to being anything else. But, you know, it it just changes you forever, you know. I, I, started, yeah, experiencing, wow. um, I started experiencing that uh, when I was a boy. And, uh, you know, I, like I, I, John knows quite a bit about I, I've talked to John about that, seeing a fleet last year. And um, mm-hmm. anyway, but uh, I started feeling experiences with um, illness from uh, chemtrails um, in the early 90s. I, I was an athlete all my life. My family is well-known as athletes. And, you know, all of a sudden I'd collapse and hit the ground and stuff. You know, I couldn't breathe and I was suffocating. And, and uh, one year, uh, this would be in the 90s, um, that, that one summer, I started noticing like maybe a hundred different types of mushrooms growing underground all of a sudden, which had never been seen by anyone. And I had covered a, a large uh, um, a sheet of plywood with maybe a hundred different 
mushrooms and photographed that, but I don't know where that is. But it made no sense to me. Like you know, and I, in 1999, I was asked by a ecological publication to write uh, an article about my views on the ecology, and I wrote something, and I, I talked about chemtrails in my own way. I said that I I um I knew who they were and what they were doing, but I, I really didn't except that I was noticing so many trails and it made no sense all of a sudden. I was living in the middle of the boonies, you know, away from city lights and all that stuff, and uh, and all of a sudden you could see all these trails and that. And uh, so that's 19 years ago. And, of course, since then I've learned a lot more and I've, you know, had the privilege of um, talking and corresponding with different people and, and, and seeing their perspectives and stuff like that. And... And we know, as someone who always was an outdoors person and who went out at night deliberately in the wintertime, it didn't matter, to, to see the stars and the twinkling of the stars. And all of a sudden, in the last five or six years, for example, maybe a little bit more, you go out at night, and if you're lucky enough to see stars, they don't twinkle anymore. Everything is dull. Uh, we had a yellow sun. Now it's white and explosive. There's no yellow sun anymore. There's yeah. no cloud formations. Um, I've taken pictures and videos and for years, uh, thousands, literally. I, some days I took 300 pictures, and I, I, and I would, you know, pare them down. And I post on my uh, on my timeline on Facebook. I have over 11,000 pictures of that I've taken of the sky in, in recent years. I mean, that's a lot of pictures, you know, and pared down from maybe 100,000 pictures. I don't know, but you look at that sky. And uh, tonight I, w- I was watching the local news, and the uh, meteorologist showed a picture that somebody took yesterday of sunset, and they said, look at this beautiful sunset. Oh, and yeah. You could have, <laughs> have been yeah. dreaming, you know. Yeah. It, anyway, yep. I, I don't want to take up all your time. I just I, I really appreciate the opportunity to be on here tonight for the rest of you. Oh, I'm going, I feel lucky that you even called in. I mean, I'm a huge fan. Like I said, you make the best posts in our Me group, too. Killing Us All with Chemtrails. Yeah, you're on it, and that's awesome. Now, I do want to make a comment. Yeah, I see it all the time with the news people, that they will post, oh, look at this beautiful sunset today, and it's like the worst campsite you've ever seen. And they think they're fooling people. I mean, we've busted these meteorologists over and over again, but they're just so blatant. Now, what do you think? Do you think that these guys are, do you think that they all know? Are they stupid? Are they paid? I mean, what's going on? No, they all know. They all know. These people are well trained. There's no way that they don't know. If you and right. I know, and John and everybody else knows, these people know because they're professionals, and it's their business to know. They they're, they're tr- like, they almost look like clones. I, I look at these people, yes. and and I've gotten on these um, sites like uh, through the television medium or whatever where they've got these uh, blogs and stuff. And as soon as you say something, they block you. You know, because oh, yeah. they know darn well that that you're ca- you're on to them. And then late, lately, around this area here, they're switching these people around. They're leaving all of a sudden, out of, just like that. They're gone, and they're somewhere else, and somebody else is replacing them and stuff like that. They know. They absolutely know. A hundred percent, they know. I agree. Mhm. Yeah. Me also. Yeah. yeah. They they can't yeah. not know. I mean, a lot of it is weather manipulation. You know, and, and Kim, the chemtrail flu, someone was speaking about that. If you look at the long-term side effects in the human body of dry ice and silver iodide, it, it's, you know, head colds. It's vomiting. You know, the, these these things, it, it's going, I, I, I don't know, I, I've said it a thousand times before, I don't believe our weather is natural. I don't believe it has been my whole life. I'm 40 years old. I've sat, I've watched it, I watch it every day. I watch them come in, lay their lines, and boom, we have clouds. You know, that's undeniable. And the fact that they don't deny that they manipulate the weather, rages, it raises huge, huge red flags, you know. Yeah. What happens when I'm a tornado, sure. let's say five years ago, a tornado came through here, and it knocked down half of the west side and some of the north side. You know, nobody pays attention. Nobody pays attention enough to say, hey, I'm going to sue you because my house was just destroyed by this weather that you brought in. You know, what do we well, do? We had, so- we had the flood in, in 2010, and, mm-hmm. and our downtown was completely underwater, and we were lucky because we only got eight inches of water in our basement. And then FEMA descended. But, I mean, we had people a block away where their basement was completely filled to the ceiling with water and uh, people who lost their homes. We had people who died, you know, 
because uh, like the water had reached the height of like um, you know telephone wires. I mean, it was bad here, and it, it hardly even made the news. But Nashville was like basically you know, half of it was like wiped out. You know, in May twenty ten. You know, so and I know, and that and it rained that that time, and that was before I was even awake and knew about chemtrails. It rained for like six days straight, nonstop. It's so obvious to me now that was a geoengineered event, but anyway, no coverage. And Risha, Risha was talking earlier about the layers and layers. You know, they do they they make their layers of clouds and they're spraying over. You know, to add more into to I call it vamping up these clouds. You know, they they usher winter in. They they're keeping winter here. You know, it should be spring, but if you look yeah. at my skies, they're creating the clouds. They're making it come in. So. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Hold on, John. I got to block you again. I mean, just mute you for a second. Your phone was doing that. All right. So we're down to two minutes. I can go over though. So don't listen to the lady. I determine when the show ends. I do want to quickly plug our conference on May 26. Everyone has a voice. Um, we have a lot of speakers that are coming. We're working out the details right now. Um, hopefully, everybody that's agreed to, to speak will attend. Lynn, are you going to be able to come? Absolutely. I might not be able to come for as long as I thought that I was going to, but it will be at least yeah. two days. Oh, man, so. I am so excited. Lynn. Me too. My home flight. I know. I mean, it's my first time. It's about time. <laughs> it's my so. first time meeting my bestie, me, you, and Maggie. Whoa. There you I mean, go. You know, Maggie's already been here. Yeah, Maggie already came here with her family and stuff. We had a great time. But, I mean, this is just going to be awesome. And uh, we're going to have a great time. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. So, I mean, you're going to give a speech and everything, right? Yes. I'm still working okay, on good. that. But Oh, everybody is. And I, I yeah. Madison Star Moon, am not giving a speech. How do you like that, them, their apples, or whatever? No, this is about <laughs> you guys. I'm the host hostess, whatever, you know, I'm going to give a little introduction, tell everybody, you know, blah, 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 but it, this thing's going to be about you guys, and I mean, I, it's, it's good for me to change it up and, you know, not be the guest speaker and not be the whatever, you know, and it's, it's going to be cool to give you guys your spot, you know, and I'm really looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say, and so we're going to just have to work out, like, the amount of time each speaker has. All right, so now that we've plugged that, that's on May 26th, don't forget, all right, now we're going to start, and we're just going to go down the line, and we're going to get everybody a chance to say like their last things, where we can find you, and anything else important you've got to say. We know we've got 15 minutes, so it's cool. And we'll start off with Mr. Graf, as soon as I unmute him. God. Okay, John. Lord, leave it to me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. No, I'm um, sorry, John. No, I swear there's nothing. I bought a new whatever earphone, the whole thing. Anyway. All right, um, just go to John Graff YouTube. You can see what I've been doing lately. I shoot some, like, one-minute videos or two minutes maybe of what the skies are looking like lately, and it's just hideous. It doesn't look earthly yeah. at all. So, right, and I watch, I watch your do. videos, but I do want to, I want to make one comment about your videos. So your videos are fantastic, and you have, you're a photographer. I mean, that's actually your job, and you've been doing it for years and stuff like that. But, like, your views and my views and everybody's views are being slaughtered by these maniacs. I mean, they are snuffing us out. Of course they and, are, I mean, you can because they're real. You can definitely tell, yeah, with your YouTube channel and with everything. So I do want you, yeah. you guys to check them out, John Graff on YouTube. I mean, that's where he's and, and on Facebook. Yep. Thank you. Thank you yep. a lot. And uh, we hope you feel better, John. I'm sorry that you're sick. I mean, Thank you. Just yeah, keep exposing these good. freaks like you do. Yeah. I appreciate it. Well, stay on Thanks. the line. Stay on the line till the end, you know, so we can close it out together. All right, Risha, you got any last right. words? And where we can find you? Uh, well, I would just say, you know, people can find me on my Facebook page. It's just my name. I have a jewelry page called Archer's Moon Jewelry, and the only reason I bring it up is because I work a lot with healing stones, and I'm really getting way more off into the properties of stones, having to do with, you know, protecting our bodies from this nonstop assault. So people can always query me there if they would like some kind of, you know, I'm, I'm starting to get more into the organized thing. But, uh, but that's another area that I'm sort of exploring, you know. So, uh, you know, I will respond to all messages, private messages, comments on my page. I'm, I'm pretty liberal about letting people post to my page. I don't really have any things up to block people. So that's how people can get a hold of me and I'm really working on two fronts I'm really working on the vaccine front and the chemtrail front because I know these things are linked I know they're spraying us with sickness 
And it's just, it's, it's a nexus. I'm always looking for the nexus, you know, so uh, that's my focus. Yeah. That's awesome, Risha. Okay, so that's Risha, R-E-E-S-H-A, Leone, L-E-O-N-E-Y. All right, good. No, yeah, so no why. No why. why. No why. Oh, they drop the why. I added the why. I, <laughs> I don't know why. It's, it's Leone. Yeah, <laughs> there's no why. Yeah, you know why I added the why because I thought it was Leon and I didn't want to mispronounce it on the show. And now I've done that. Right. Myself. Right. I'm sorry, That's guys. okay. I've heard people pronounce yep. it Leon because it was O N E at the end. <laughs> <laughs> so it's L E O N E. There we go. That's right. All right, and I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna speak for Doug, Dougie. All okay, right, so that's Doug Sipes, and he was the person that spoke in the beginning of the show. I have been getting messages from people, unfortunately, who are stating that our show. This is what they said: live stream is breaking up badly. That's what they're saying mm-hmm. about this show. So, oh, and I actually just I actually just talked out of Blog Talk. Hold on one second, guys. I gotta get back in. Okay, let's see if this is the line studio. I'm sorry, guys. Maybe I am a little rusty. Okay. And now we're going to move on to Lynn Fong. Uh, you can find Lynn. me at Facebook just by my first name. Oh, well, not by my first name. My Lynn Fawns also. Um, I mean, I touch base on pretty much everything. There's some. There's nothing that I don't really talk about, and I'm always open to new information, so... Let me know. Are you still getting trolled? I, you know what? I am not still getting, uh, only because I've, I've locked up my page. If you're not my friend, you can't comment. And if you send me a friend request, believe that I catfish your whole profile. So I mean, <laughs> if there's any link to any yeah. any kind of yeah. troll whatsoever, we, we just can't be friends. So Yeah, that's what I do. Lynn Fawns, L-Y-N-N-F-A-W-N-S. And now we have Richard Dwayron, all right? Go for it, Richard. You got me yeah. last. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm I'm 71 years old, and uh, so I've seen a lot, maybe more than a lot of people on this on this particular program, even. But uh, you know, we each one of us has to do what we can. I, I find it uh, kind of odd sometimes when I, I I read or whatever people say, Amanda, do this or do more, or Richard, do more. Or whatever. We can only do what we can, and we run out of energy and, and that sort of thing. Sometimes I'm burnt out beyond, you know, beyond fried, and I still try the same as you do, and those of us who care, you know. But um, in your case, you do more than most. But uh, it's very good to see a community coming together, and you're the, the catalyst for all of this, and it's so wonderful to see this and wish you so much well in, in this coming summit. That's all I have to Yeah, say. and thank you for your donation, Richard. I was so oh, happy to okay. see that. I mean, yes, I we all appreciate that. You are helping to get Max Vegan here. You know, everybody that's donated yeah. to this point is helping to pay for his trip. Yeah, I really appreciate it. All right, and that's Richard, hold on. I don't. You know, I'm going to the right now so I can spell everything right because I pronounced your name because I knew I was going to say it wrong. It doesn't look like Richard. It looks like Dorian. That's what I always thought it was. Well, yeah, the, uh, Dorian is a French name, and it's spelled D-O-R-D-O-R-I-O-N, and and my name uh, is D-O-I-R-O-N. So the the way it's, the way it's spelled, it, it we most people Dorian. could not call us Dorian, but it's actually Dweron. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yep. No big and you deal. can find him on Facebook. Yep. And do you have a YouTube channel? No, I don't. I, I that's something I'm I'm totally uh, inept at all that kind of stuff. I have no clues, but uh, I am a writer. And if, <laughs> okay. And, uh, yeah. As, yeah. As you know, so anybody wants to read right, my work, it's, it's available, and and I have websites. I do have a website. No. What What's your website link? Uh, it's called uh, spiritsinpeace dot com, like www dot spirits with an s uh, in in peace dot com. And it will uh, give people an idea who I am as a writer. Thank you so much for your thank time you. and for calling in. And now we're going to go thank to you. Adriana Rossi. My pleasure. First time caller. How, um, anyway, I'm uh, I'm 60 years old, and I've seen quite a bit too in my life. And um, I want to bring up the nanotechnology that we're being sprayed with, and the bio warfare. And um, in 2009, I bought a cell. I mean a uh, telescope, I mean not a telescope, a microscope, excuse me, and I've been looking at different specimens, and um, we're being sprayed with smart dust, which is a tracking device, 
that they can track us by satellite, and they're self-assembling, self-replicating. Mm-hmm. And then the nanotechnology is carbon, and that's nanotech. You know, it's it's uh, self-assembling, self-replicating uh, technology, and you can see it with the bare eye, even though it is nanotechnology, when you have an eye for it and you've seen it for so long. You, like, know what to look for. I mean, it's pretty obvious. And even in a sink, like in a white sink, you you would see that that does not wash down the sink because they can stick to things. They're able to stick to things. And in the microscope, they have, like, a barb on them, and they... Um, they're able to um, jump about three inches, and so can the smart dust. And the smart dust you can see in your dust can if you're sweeping. You'll be sweeping, and it looks kind of like glitter. It's super, super tiny. Um, it'll be silver, silverish gold, and then it's red, and then green. And I haven't been able to figure that one out, but I think the green is when they found their target. And I'm not sure of the other two, but um, this really, the bio warfare, you know, is giving people, has been giving people more gallons disease. They call it more gallons, but I think that's really a bad lab for that, what, what's happening to people. And um, according to Carnicom Institute, you know, uh, Mr. Carnicom, he's a scientist. He used to work for the Army. He, he stated that everyone has this. It's in their blood. And um, just because you, don't, you might not have the symptoms right now, you know, or have anything, um, this is all in our blood. And when, once your immune system goes down and it takes down your immune system, then you would start exhibiting the symptoms. So this is yeah. a concern to me. And also the frequencies, the radio frequencies um, from the ARP and... Uh, probably bouncing off the cell phone towers too, and I have I've observed this. I don't know if any of you have, but there there's um, um, military satellites um, up in space. I've seen them with my telescope and my binoculars. They come down at night. You know, they drop down, and they're shooting frequencies off of those satellites, and um, you can see this satellites with your telescope? Yes. They, they're so close, you can see them with the naked eye. And they I've never seen a satellite. In fact, I don't, even believe, I don't even believe in satellites, so you have to make me a believer. <laughs> okay. Well, these satellites, they form formations, like triangle formations, and you can see them. Uh, I see I see them all the time. My grandchildren see them, and uh, they're emitting like a frequency, and um, it's pretty worrisome. Um, I'm pretty concerned about it, and um, the frequencies. Um, it's going to be for mind control, and uh, some people will be mind controlled, and some people will just you know be hearing the frequencies. And uh, I believe that that would be, you know, electromagnetic uh, weapon, you know, a dew weapon uh, or uh-huh. microwave or microwave yeah. weapon. And um, yeah. it's real. It's very real. And once they roll out that 5G, we're in big trouble. That means that the whole globe will be hooked up. There will be nowhere to escape. And if people don't do anything now, it's going to be too late. Once they crank that on, it'll be on all over the globe. Yep, just one big microwave, you know. Yeah. And yeah, and, and they are and use they are using these towers as weapons. These are not just telecommunication towers. We've already uncovered that. Yeah. Yes, they just installed two new ones up here, and I I live in a really small town, like with about a thousand people, and then up above. Um, there might be 2,000 people three miles, you know, up, up the mountain. But you, there's two of them here, and each, um, each one of those towers covers a 40-mile radius mm. wow. for their target. Yeah, that's really scary. 
thinking that I have yes. seven across the street from me and three right behind me and then two in my backyard. I mean, there's, I, I, you know, you're talking about two towers that cover, you know, each tower is 40 miles. Jeez, we're done. Yes. I mean, we're just being cooked. Yes. And not only that, when they crank up that, crank, crank that up, um, they can kill you with that. But when they crank it up, people are going to be hearing frequencies so loud that they can't even think. And uh, um, that kills your, your cells inside your body and uh, destroys your organs. And it's just, it can cause a heart attack. And it just is really worrisome and that I can't believe, oh, they, now they have cactuses with microwave weapons. Oh, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, I saw the one cactus on fire. If I see a cactus on fire in the desert, you know something's wrong. You know, come yeah, on. I, yeah, they're disguising them. Mm-hmm. Oh, and now I just read this the other day because I read a lot of patents and do a lot of research. And uh, they now um, Walmart um, has a patent. They're, they filed a patent for robotic bees. Oh, yeah, uh-huh. That's really scary. Because they're scary. killing off the real natural bees, uh-huh. Yes, yeah, that's a, that's a Harvard-MIT thing. Well, Harvard mostly. They, uh, they uh, invented the robot bee. That's all government co-opted stuff. These uh, crazy. Yeah. guys. Yep, scary. Yeah. 